Have you ever thought about the possibility of eternal life? Quantum theory claims that none of us really die. We may even travel after our physical deaths through a multiverse, whose dimensions are known in some cultures as the world of the gods. How quantum physicists can even prove that we all live forever, we'll show you now. The Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone, or Divine Ambrosia. All these remedies are said to confer immortality. The question of eternal life and immortality is found in many cultures of this earth, and there are just as many answers to it. In our Western culture, the belief in life after death has practically disappeared. The Christian principle of a journey of the soul to heaven, or if one was unlucky, to hell, is hardly present in people's minds anymore. In Eastern cultures, on the other hand, the idea that the soul travels on after death, that it goes to dimensions where the gods normally dwell, and that souls return to earth in a new round and in a new life, is quite normal. There are hundreds of people worldwide who were close to death or even claim to have already crossed the threshold into the divine realms, and there they met entities that appeared like angels and sent them back to earth. Not infrequently, such people experience spontaneous healings or serious illnesses or radically change their lives because they realized who they really are in the realms after death. Until now, all these were pure ideologies, fantasies, unprovable claims or religious ideas, but now quantum physics have provided the proof. We really are immortal. What if you would never die? Honestly, have you ever thought about what it would be like to live forever? Here on Earth, by simply manipulating your genes so that you could keep getting younger, or you leave your body and go on into another dimension as pure information. That living beings are capable of simply reversing the aging process is demonstrated by a tiny jellyfish that accomplishes this very feat for some reason. This simple example shows what is possible in nature and that we must never say never. Imagine if science decodes the trick or can program your genome to live up and down the age line. Or you would just live forever without aging. You would be immortal and could still be on this earth in 1,000 or 10,000 years. Evidence in Quantum Physics Scientists may now have found the key to eternal life in the world of the smallest particles. Quantum mechanics first found that light is a basic building block of matter and light particles are much tinier than an atom. Quanta can be split again into many smaller particles and at some point only pure information and energy remain as the actual building blocks of the universe. Energy can fluctuate in an absolutely balanced state and disappear physically with it, but the information is eternal. Also, your bodies are matter, which finally consists of condensed light and information. After your death, your information remains consequently. Australian quantum physicists expressed it in such a way. If a forest burns down, the trees, the bushes, and the animals that lived in it disappear into the physical world. On the quantum level, however, the forest remains as information and it could be reconstructed if we had the necessary knowledge how this rematerialization is realizable. The forest could disappear, however, for example, also from our world. The information moves on and somewhere else in another dimension or at another place in the universe, a new forest materializes with the help of the information. Leaning on quantum mechanics, there is still another theory which shows you a completely new world. Theory of Biocentrism The theory of biocentrism was developed by the U.S. scientist Robert Lanza and says basically that it's not the universe that creates life, but that it's life which creates the universe. What we call consciousness within us was actually there at the beginning of everything and now, almost 14 billion years later, consciousness is channeling itself through us humans. In truth, we humans are not just bodies and brains, but consciousness that has taken on or connected to a material form. In Lanza's model, our brains and bodies are more modems and what we perceive as observers or the I is pure consciousness. The brain and body receive signals from outside and translate these into life experiences and matter. If you are already familiar with the quantum theory, then you know that quanta can appear as wave and particle. The wave is the unformed potential and the particle becomes matter by observation. The consciousness is the observer. When the brain and body die, only the modem is destroyed, but the signals remain and could possibly be redirected or recycled into another host. 
in Lanza's biocentric reality. Life is the signal, and that continues without the body and brain as modem. Thus, consciousness creates the universe through us, and not the other way around. Lanza's ideas were first presented in the late 2000s and have been celebrated in some quarters and vigorously attacked in others. For some, biocentrism offers a bridge between philosophical concepts about life and death and physics. For others, the theory is still far too vague and uncertain with little to no evidence of what consciousness really is. Supporters also draw on the fine-tuning problem, which shows how many physical conditions there are for life to arise. Water, heat, oxygen, carbon compounds, and more must be finely tuned for life to arise at all. All this cannot be based on coincidences, but seems to have been made for us or by us. Now, one can ask oneself, of course, who created all this before humans were there as observers? Did possibly also dinosaurs create matter by consciousness and their presence on the planet? And what about the first bacteria? Extensions of Lanza's theory assume that consciousness is omnipresent. It lives in you, in me, in plants, animals, even in the materially lifeless space of the vast cosmos. Such ideas are excitingly reminiscent of the animism of many natural religions, which believe that everything that exists possesses a soul or even a consciousness. Life after death Lanza's theories and some quantum models have proven that consciousness is above matter. This inevitably leads to a so-called life after death, or rather, death is not possible in such a reality. Not if life is actually consciousness and not bound to matter, but as an illusion, because life and consciousness are no longer connected with our bodies. If we take away body and brain, consciousness evaporates as a kind of energy into the rest of the universe, or it moves on other dimensions and lives on there. In the mid-20th century, German physicist Burkhard Heim created a 12-dimensional model of reality that included supermaterial levels such as consciousness and even the divine dimensions. Amazingly, many of the unsolved mathematical formulas resolve when we assume 10 dimensions or more. In one of these dimensions, consciousness could be a normal force, only we don't currently have the means to detect or measure it. René Descartes claimed in the 17th century that mind and body are two fundamentally different substances. The mind is immaterial and thinking, while the body is material and spatially extended. Despite their difference, he believed that they interact in the pineal gland of the brain. In the course of the Enlightenment, this view led to a separation of mind and body. It is only in the present day that medical scientists are also finding more and more evidence that the two entities are closely connected. And physical illnesses, for example, often have a cause in the mind. If we consider that consciousness can form matter, or express differently, that consciousness can be condensed to matter, there is no separation. The particle is wave and vice versa. The body is consciousness and vice versa. The only difference is that the physical body in the three-dimensional world has a limited duration of existence because it ages. However, the example of the eternal jellyfish shows that this process is not a condition of life. Rather, all living things that age could simply follow a program and whoever can rewrite this one day will have found the key to eternal physical life on Earth. Quantum Immortality Lanza's biocentrism is not the only idea pointing in this direction. The quantum immortality model draws on the central concept of the multiverse. Developed from Hugh Everett's Many Worlds model, quantum immortality postulates that every decision we make brings a parallel universe into being. Imagine an infinite tree with branches, each branch representing a different path your life could have taken. Each decision, big or small, adds a new branch to the tree. While these universes coexist, they never intersect, but they are all the result of our choices. It's as if you are in an infinite maze of mirrors, each mirror showing a different version of you based on the paths you have chosen in your life. Over the years, science fiction writers have realized the potential of this idea in novels and movies that show that seemingly meaningless choices can be forks into a parallel universe. What the multiverse might mean for the afterlife is yet another issue. In quantum immortality, there could always be a possible bifurcation in the multiverse through which a person survives. Key studies, such as the double-slit experiment, show that all options are always possible until observed. 
The multiverse allows for ideas that it may be that consciousness lives on in other worlds after death on Earth. You may even exist here and now in other dimensions without realizing it. If the body is dead and your attention withdraws from this world, you may become aware of another existence on another plane and realize that you have never really been alive or dead. Everything is just an illusion in the three-dimensional world. This view fits with Schrodinger's cat, a quantum theory thought model that states precisely that the cat is dead and alive at the same time until someone with a certain state of mind makes a measurement. In the Eastern religions like Hinduism, the multiverse has been known for a long time and is a reality lived in the consciousness of people. The Vedas describe different levels of materiality and spiritual, subtle worlds. On these planes, which can be seen like other universes in the multiverse, live entities that they know as gods, demons, or angelic entities. Man possesses a soul that is immortal, and this soul can take different forms within the multiverse. Don't want to miss any new video in the future? Then press subscribe now.